Hello, this is the Watch Dog, and welcome back to Fun with Watches. If watches weren't fun, you'd only need one. Today, we're going to review the Porster homage to an AP Royal Oak. Let's start out with the wrist check. I'm wearing another Porster, an homage to the Rolex Hulk. And Grogu is wearing my Skamine 9133. I told Grogu that I was having trouble coming up with an opening joke, so he said I should ask Alexa. Alexa, tell me a Star Wars joke. Baby Groot and Baby Yoda walk into a bar. The bartender says, let me guess, bottle service? Grogu was highly offended by that joke. He said he's not Baby Yoda, and he does not drink from a bottle. So he said I should write my own jokes from now on. Alright, let's take a look at the watch. The packaging was kind of underwhelming, but that's okay. I mean, do we really need great packaging? But then there is the unsigned warranty card and the hang tag in case you think it's a fake Porsche. And the extra links I took out. And that's about it. But here's the watch. Isn't that a nice looking watch? I really like it. I think when it comes to Royal Oak homages under a hundred dollars. You can't do better than this. So If you want a Royal Oak homage and you don't want to spend a ton of money uh, Go buy this and you don't even have to continue watching my review This is the first poster on my channel I've done quite a few Royal Oak homages on my channel and although they have been fun watches that I enjoyed reviewing There has always been disappointments and in no way would anyone confuse those homages with the real thing even at a distance one of the most distinct aspects of a Royal Oak is its octagon-shaped bezel, and many homages are perfectly happy giving their watch an octagon bezel with a waffle dial and calling it good. But the other defining characteristics of a Royal Oak are its bracelets with rectangular links connected together by two connector links. Every other watch I've had has either had a different style of bracelet or the connector links were simulated parts of the link and not fully articulating individual pieces. This Porsche does indeed have a fully articulating bracelet that looks like the real thing. It also has real hexagon shaped bezel screws that actually connect the bezel and the case back and the only thing keeping this from looking like a real Royal Oak besides the Porsche name and logo is the reliable but ever homely looking NH35 showing through the display case back with its stock rotor. I paid $80 for this watch, which seems like an incredible bargain considering how well it is built. If you don't like blue, there's also black and white dials. There are also sterile dial options. I've never been a fan of sterile dials as I am not ashamed of my Chinese made homage and I never buy them unless it is the only option. The watch is 42 millimeters if you measure at the flats of the bezel. 52.6 millimeters lug to lug, so this is indeed a full size watch. But it's only 11.8 millimeters thick, so they were able to keep it under 12, which is usually pretty good for an NH35 powered watch. And the lug width does not apply, but it's 25 millimeters where the bracelet meets the case. And it weighs 171 grams on the supplied bracelet with two links removed. So, yeah, this is a full size watch. Then we have the bezel. It is an octagon shape and it has that vertical coarse brushing that's pretty distinct for a Royal Oak. And then we have these screws and they are hexagon screws and they are actually real screws. They are not just decorations. And as you can see on the case back, they go all the way through. So they actually hold the bezel and the case back on which is the first watch I've ever had that actually did that. Usually they're just little engravings into the bezel. Then the bezel's polished on the sides. And then we have the dial. We have the Porster name and logo up top. And I kind of like the Porster logo. I think they did a good job with it. And then it just says automatic on the bottom. No mention of the depth rating, but it's 100 meters, which is perfectly acceptable for a non-dive watch. And then the dial has this waffle pattern. And then we have baton indices with a double at the 12, and they are loomed. And then we have the loom stick hands, and then we have an unloomed second hand. 
Then we have a date at the three with a half index at the three. And the date wheel is not color matched, but since it takes up part of the index, I'm perfectly fine with white because it just kind of looks fine. Then we have a hexagon shaped screw down crown. It's not signed. I like the fact that it's a hexagon shape though. A lot of these Royal Oak homages don't bother. And the thread action is good. There's a nice pop when you unthread it. Then when you go to screw it down, the threads catch easily and there's not a lot of resistance. So I like that. Then we have a flat sapphire crystal, and it is sapphire. Sometimes these Chinese companies tell little fibs about that, but no, I tested it, and it is indeed sapphire. And then we have the case. The case is really nice. We got uh, brush sides and tops, and then we have this polished chamfered edge. And it's, like I said, fairly thin, considering how big this watch is. And the fact it has an NH35 in it. So, yeah, I like the case. I think they did a really good job with it. Then we have a display case back. There is no writing on the case back. But as you can see, it's screwed on. So these bezel screws are actually real. They're not just decorations. And then we have a display that shows off the NH35. This display is glass, it is not sapphire. I tested it and I'm perfectly fine with that. The whole purpose of sapphire is it doesn't scratch and you're not really gonna scratch your case back resting on your wrist. So why, why increase the cost of a watch for no gain? I mean, when you're spending thousands for an Omega, yes, you want a sapphire case back display but if it's a under hundred dollars watch why why increase the price 10 bucks just to have a sapphire then underneath is the nh35 this is a 24 joule movement that hand winds hacks and has that bi-directional rotor and they're usually fairly accurate right off the shelf but we'll go ahead and check it out on the time grapher because i spent a lot of money on this time grapher and might as well use it here it is on the time grapher, and as you can see, it's running spot on. We got zero, zero, zero. So it is very, very accurate. I don't know if that means that they actually regulated it when they put it together or not, but uh-oh, look at that beat error though, 1.2 milliseconds. That's why you see two distinct lines on the screen. So, well, if I had a choice between accuracy or beat error, I would probably take accuracy any day. Uh, amplitude is kind of low too, but man, look at all them zeros. Then the bracelet is the star of the show. This is by far the nicest bracelet I've ever seen on a Royal Oak homage. Look at these links. They're nicely brushed. And once again, they it has true connector links. These are not just parts of one link connecting the other. They are actually fully articulating really nice we have these chamfered edges on the sides uh, the brush works great has a really nice uh, reflection to it it's brushed but shiny really nice there then this actual clasp here look at this butterfly clasp this is by far the best built butterfly clasp i've ever seen on any of these chinese homage watches uh, really nice framework uh, gives you real confidence. You never think this is going to come loose on you. I just wish they would assign this little square here. Then as you can see too, this square here is real. It's not just a, not just a decoration. And then we do have screw pin adjusters and the screw heads are pretty small. But you can find a screwdriver. I didn't have too much difficulty sizing this. And I'm just so impressed with this bracelet. Here's the watch on my seven and a half inch wrist. It's a big watch. It's a full size watch. But man, it's nice looking. I really like this watch. 
Look at that wrist roll. Look at that reflection. And that's it's a brush bracelet, and look how shiny it is. That's very impressive. And once again, it looks like a true royal oak bracelet. It doesn't, it doesn't look fake. I just wish they would have signed that square on the clasp. I like the Porster logo. I mean, why hide it? I know it's for the sterile option. A lot of people don't like to have logos on their Chinese homages. You're not fooling anybody. Here we are in the Loom Room. Every watch is going to have at least one disappointment and it looks like the Loom is going to let this one down. As we speed up the time, we see the indices fade almost immediately. The hands are a little better, but not by much. The hour hand is better than the minute hand and the last thing to see on the dial. This is pretty poor Loom. What do I like about this watch? Well, it has real bezel screws that actually hold the bezel and the case back down, and they're not just decoration. I like, I like this bracelet with the fully articulating connector links. It is the best Royal Oak style bracelet I've ever seen on these Chinese homages. And this is by far the best built butterfly clasp I've ever had on any watch. What are my gripes and groans? Poor loom. And it's not really a gripe, but I wish they would have signed the clasp. And I only removed two links to fit on my seven and a half inch wrist. So that means if your wrist is bigger than eight, you're going to need more links. Do I recommend this watch? Yes, when it comes to a Royal Oak homage under $100, then this is by far the best you can get. This is the closest thing to a real Royal Oak I've ever seen. It totally smokes similarly priced alternatives from Cadison or Pagayan Design. I highly recommend this watch. It is one of the highlights of my past couple years of reviewing watches. Well, thank you for watching my review of the Porster, no reference number, homage to a AP Royal Oak, and I will be back with a, another review. Be sure and like and subscribe to my channel. Bye.